Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. A brand new series of certification chats and video practice exams, video boot camps, all kinds of great stuff starts today for our CCNA 200-120 and CSENT 100-101 studies. In case you've been in hibernation or just away for a while, suspended animation, whatever happened to you, we have moved on to new exam versions. Uh, like I said, it seems just like seven years ago since the last time they changed it. I'm only saying that because they usually change it every three years or so. But as always, the fundamentals don't change. It's just the topics may change just a little bit. And that's really what happened here. And understandably, there's much more emphasis on IP version 6 than there was in previous versions of both the CCNA and the CSENT exam. If you're taking the two exam path to the CCNA, you're going to find that really 95% of the IP version 6 material that you study it's going to be in the ICND-1 material, the CSUN material. They really moved that in there big time. Uh, when I made the video boot camp for the entire course, that's what I ran into. It's like 95 to 98% of it was in the first set of videos, and then there was a little bit in ICND-2. But let's talk about why IP version 6 makes people a little bit nervous. And the first reason, really, of course, is that it's just so much different than what we're used to dealing with. And the reason, the first source of that anxiety is the addressing. Once you start working with it, you're going to be amazed at how simple it really is. That the key is once you start working with it. I went through the same thing when IP version 6 really first came out. And I was studying for, I believe, my IE lab at the time. And when I first heard about it, it's like, oh, okay, well, that's just my, I still remember my exact first thought. It's like, well, that's just going to be two more octets like on the end of a version 4 address, right? <laughs> yeah, seemed perfectly logical to me at the time, but it was just a little different than that. It was more uh, something like this. And this, of course, is a typical IP version 6 address, or at least in the format. I've written this one specifically for this video because we're going to do a video practice exam here in a moment working with this particular address. And there, you, we have to get used to seeing these addresses in their compressed format because you have to get used to it because you're going to see it that way first off on the live equipment then you're going to see it that way on your exams that's another big reason and we've just got to be ready to look at a compressed address and uncompress it if you will and know what the full address would be we also have to have the skill of looking at an address like this and saying okay let's just say Cisco asked us this and this will be our video practice exam for today what is the most compressed and legal expression of this version 6 address? A couple of little, uh, I'm going to say buzzwords, little red flags in there. Most compressed and legal. Of course, if it's an illegal expression, it's not doing us much good. So if you want to pause the video here for a moment and work on that, that's great. If you're not familiar with compressing an IP version 6 address, fantastic. Stick around because you'll see exactly how we do it. There are some very simple rules to it, but they're rules we have to obey for the real world and for our exam. Before we dive into that, I want to thank those of you who have picked up my brand new ICND-1 study guide on Amazon. And it's actually number one, as you can see right now, on the Amazon bestseller list in the networking section for networks and protocols. I'm very proud of that, and it's all thanks to your support. Uh, as of today, which is November 12th, 2013, my ICND-2 book will be out in about a week. We couldn't put it all in one. Amazon made us break it up. So uh, actually, I'm even a little more proud of this one. This is including hardcovers, and we're number two here. I'm very excited about that because, as you can see, everything else here is a paperback or hardback. I think there may be one other Kindle version in the top ten of a book, but it's just been fantastic, the uh, response to the book. So thank you so much for that. Quick reminder, you don't need a Kindle to read these babies. Uh, you can use any free Kindle app and read it on a smartphone, PC, Mac, chip in your head, whatever you got. So let's do a little bit of compressing here with this address. And I was talking about these two rules. And let's review our rules before we begin this. We have two different kinds of compression, and they both deal with the zeros. They're called zero compression and leading zero compression. And there, the two big differences here are, first off, with zero compression, what we're doing there is compressing multiple blocks of zeros. It could be one block, but we hope it's multiple blocks. The deal there is we can only do that once in an address. And when you see two colons consecutively, 
you know that zero compression has been performed there. So if you ever see an IP version 6 address on a practice exam, real exam, doesn't matter. If you ever see an address with two colons, consecutive colons, in two different places in the address, that's an illegal expression. You cannot do that. Now, leading zero compression, you can do as often as you want, and that is just dropping the leading zeros of any given block of numbers in this address, but you must leave one number, at least one number, even if that number is a zero. So looking at this and remembering that I said most efficient, that kind of makes you think, okay, you're only getting to use zero compression once. We got to make it count. So let's make it count. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up a little bit larger here, and we'll just work from left to right. 1111 and 2132. Not a lot of compression can go on there, any kind of zero compression, because frankly, we don't have any zeros to compress. So we've got these two consecutive blocks of zeros right here. That looks promising for zero compression. We also have one full block of zeros here at the end. Now, which one of those areas would it be more efficient for us to use zero compression? And by more efficient, I mean make the address as small as possible. That's going to be our set right here. And what we can do here, of course, is just delete that because we end up with these two colons, and that's exactly what it's going to look like in an IP version 6 address. That's exactly what we're going to do. Zero compression is represented by two colons in a row. Now, continuing to work from left to right, we've got this 0313. Can we do leading zero compression there? Absolutely because we have a leading zero. So we are just going to drop that and keep working from left to right. 2310, can we do anything with that? We can't use zero compression because we've already used that once and we can't use leading zero compression because this block does not have any leading zeros. So then we go to 0111. Well, we definitely have a leading zero there. The one trap you don't want to fall into here is dropping both <clears throat> excuse me dropping both of these zeros because this zero at the end of 2310 it's not a leading zero and there ain't no such thing as trailing zero compression okay and if my poor english there helps you remember that rule on exam day hey baby whatever it takes but that's what you've got to watch out for we can drop this leading zero in that block with no problem at all but that zero and two, three, one, zero has to stay there. It's not a leading zero in that block. So finally, we come to zero, 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 zero here at the end. So if I've already used zero compression once, then I can't do it again. We know that. But what's this block going to look like with leading zero compression? It's going to look like this. And why is it going to look like that? Because it's leading zero compression. You can't drop all four zeros you have to leave at least one number in a block where you are performing that leading zero compression. So that is the shortest expression of our particular IP version 6 address in this video practice exam. We're going to be doing some more of this because this is a valuable skill. Uh, and on the YouTube channel, I do have some other practice exams uh, for version 6 that utilize uh, leading zero compression and zero compression. But before we sign off here, stick with me. There's one very important note here. This is the kind of thing where you can do what I call your little five-minute practice exams. And you can write these yourself. If you're using a, a practice exam that you bought, that's fine. But this is the kind of thing where when you have five minutes here or there at work, I'm not saying, you know, take an hour off at work. Uh, you'll probably get fired. So don't do that. We need the gig. But you've got five minutes here and there. Instead of maybe going on the web and reading something that just isn't all that interesting, it's not helping build your career, just go ahead and write out an address of your own without even thinking about it. And then just say, okay, with zero compression, leading zero compression, what would I do with this address? And it is amazing what those little five and ten minute periods there of here and there of focused study will do for you on exam day. I guarantee you, you'll be glad you spent that time that way. Thanks so much for our sticking around for our CCNA chat today. We've got a lot more on the way, and we'll definitely work some more with IP version 6 along the way. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.